In my last video, I ran through the detailed process of bringing in SVG into Fusion 360, creating the 3D body, creating the toolpaths, and exporting those toolpaths to my Onefinity CNC. And then we created this wonderful little catch-all. Today we're going to do the exact same thing, but with Carbide 3D. The high-level workflow is the same, but with a few twists along the way. We will start by switching over to the computer, importing the SVG, and creating our toolpaths. Let's get started. So here we are at the computer. What you see in front of you is Carbide Create. This is the blank canvas that we are going to start with. Real quick, a walkthrough through the user interface. What you have is your little tool area right here on the left hand side. You have your canvas right here in the center. Now the toolbar is separated into design and then tool pass, which we'll get into in just a little bit. So the very first thing you want to do when you launch Carbide Create is you want to set the options for your design. So in that case, you want to click setup right here in the little gear icon and it's going to ask you for the job setup parameters. So what we want to do here is we want to set the stock size to the size that we have. Then this is from the previous project where we have an eight by eight. So we're going to set this to eight by eight. And then from the previous project, we also know that we have stock that is 20 millimeters tall. And so that is roughly uh, 0.7874 inches. And we are going to zero it from the top. As I mentioned in a previous video as well, you do have the option of setting your origin for you where you want to start your milling. In this case, you do have lower left, you have center left, top left, and then center. We are going to leave it at lower left because that's what we did in the last video and everything should be fine. In this case, we do get the opportunity to select the material that we want to use, the machine that we have, our retract height, and our units. So in this case, we have hardwood because we happen to have maple. The machine options here are relatively limited, so we are going to Go ahead and select the Shape Oco Pro. That is the machine that is perhaps the most equivalent to the Onefinity that we have behind us. Next is the retract height. I generally set this in Fusion 360 to 0.2 inches. I found it not to matter too much unless you do have clamps that you are trying to avoid. In that case, you definitely want to set that retract height to the height of your clamps. So if you're using those big Rockler clamps, for example, you probably want to set it to a half inch or maybe even three quarters of an inch. In this case, we're going to use that blue tape method again. So 0.2 inches is more than fine. The last option we have here is the units we want to use for our design and our milling. In this case, I generally do cam in inches and I do my designs in metric. So because we only get to choose one or the other, I'm going to go ahead and use inches because that just happens to be something I'm more familiar with. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. You can see here a little bit that the, the canvas resized a little bit. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to import our SVG. And so that is right here in that toolbar area where it says import. So we're going to click this button here. It's going to open the folder where we have our SVG. And again, we want to select that dog foot SVG right here and click open. So you can see that Carbide Create automatically put it down on the canvas. It's more or less centered left and right, but not quite centered vertically. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and click and drag this with the left mouse button and just kind of visually center it uh, vertically and horizontally. So that looks pretty good right about there. We should be good to go with that. Okay, so now that we have our SVG into Carbide Create, we don't need to create a model from it because it doesn't have a 3D modeling space. What we want to do is just go ahead and jump into our tool pass. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click tool pass right here. And you can see here, there's lots of different tool paths we can create, contour, pocket, texture, drill, V-carve and advanced V-carving. For our simulation options here, we can do it with aluminum, beech, brass, cherry, pine, MDF, padalk, white wood, and wood grain. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select cherry because there is no option for maple or even walnut for that matter, which I find really interesting. We're going to select cherry. Now, in interest of full disclosure, I do have an older version of Carbide Create. If you download the current version of Carbide Create, you will not have the option right here where it says save G code. 
you must upgrade to the pro version of Carbide Crate if you want the ability to save G-Code and you do not have this older version. If you are interested in my thoughts about free software and all of the features that are being removed from it to push people towards that subscription model, then please check out this video that I've linked above and down in the description. I have done a full detailed analysis of what I feel the options are and the behaviors of some of the software manufacturers. But let's go ahead and get back to this video. All right, so here we have, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and create those pockets in the dog paws themselves, just like we did in Fusion 360. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to select all of these by clicking them and holding on the shift key and clicking all of the paws right here. And you can see they are highlighted in red and they, when you have one that is, you're hovered over, it's actually got a dash line as well. So we wanna go ahead and we wanna select pocket right here. And you can see that it defaults to the last end mill that you have selected or the end mill that is kind of the top of the list. The options here are very limited compared to Fusion 360. We get to select the tool or the end mill, the starting cut depth and the maximum depth. So in this case, we wanna go down that uh, instead of 12 millimeters like we did before, we wanna do more like 15 millimeters. So let's go ahead and let's launch our calculator. Let's see what 15 millimeters is. 15 divided by 25.4. That is uh, 0.59. So we're going to go ahead and type that in here. 0.59 as the max depth and the start depth. There we go. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to say pocket. 0.75. Now comes the important part, and this is the part that is a little bit different than Fusion. We do want to select that tool just like we did in Fusion. However, when we select tool here, you're gonna see there's a, a lot of options here. Bits that are specifically designed for any CNC machine, the Nomad, the Shapeoko, and the other Shapeoko versions here. So what we wanna do is essentially open the uh, area that says here, Carbide 3D Any Any. We're gonna select end mills. You can see that there's nothing here. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna say, let's say Shapeoko right here, a material for hardwood. It limits the number of bits that we have, so we're gonna go ahead and open that up, end mill here. And here are the options that we have for end mills. You can see that the end mill that we are looking for, that uh, white side bit that is three quarters of an inch is simply not here. So what we need to do at this point is we need to add that end mill as a new end mill into the library. Now, because this is the stock library from the software, it will not let us add or edit these end mills. What we need to do instead is create a new library entirely and then add that end mill to our new library. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna select new library. I'm gonna, uh, material is any, any, machine is any, library name is going to be my library. Very straightforward, click OK. So now you can see I have my library, end mills, ball end mills, V cutters and engravers. I'm gonna select end mills right here. I'm gonna select right click, new tool, end mill. I'm gonna do it in inches right here. This is how we create a new end mill in Carbide Create. The name here now, the bit that we want to use, I'm going to flip over here, is this white side bowl bit. It is the same bit that we used in Fusion 360 that I already had in my library. It is the white side 1372. You can see this right here. So we're going to switch back over to Carbide Crate. We're going to say white side 1372. The model number is 1372. The vendor is white side. Oh, side, there you go. <laughs> Okay, the tool number, we're gonna leave that at 10. The diameter is three quarters of an inch, 0.75. The plunge rate, one of what we had with Fusion 360 is we had a plunge rate of 40 inches per minute. We had a feed rate of 80. The RPM was 14,000. And the depth that we wanted to cut uh, during our operations was 0.15. Now the 3D speeds here are not going to matter because we're not going to use that for, we're not going to use this bit for 3D cutting. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. So there you go. Now we have our end mill set. We have our white side. Everything set here. We're going to select OK. And so now we're back to the edit toolpath screen. Now that we have our tool selected here, our white side 1372, which is our three quarters of an inch bowl cutting bit. Now we want to set the step over. By default, it's going to do a 50% step over. That is reasonable. By default, it also sets it at that depth per path that we previously set, which is 0.15. That is good. 
the plunge rate is 40, the feed rate is 80, and our RPM is 14,000. All of those things are the things we set on the previous screen. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click OK. And then we're gonna click OK again here, right here. So now what you see is it automatically computed the tool pass. It says here that it's gonna take about two minutes to run. And so if we click show simulation, it's gonna calculate the tool pass. And then it's gonna show in what it considers cherry color, which I think is interesting. It doesn't quite look like cherry to me. That's neither here nor there. So what you can see is it is going to move through here and then it's gonna do the cutting. Now it's gonna do a plunge, it's gonna remove the material, do another plunge, remove the material. And so it looks pretty good in terms of the tool path. So I think we're good to go here. But we need to add one more tool path. So we're gonna add the contour tool path just like we did before. So I'm gonna click contour. I'm gonna select this tool path right here. I'm gonna change the bit because it defaulted to the last bit that we selected. We certainly don't want that uh, bull cutting bit for our contour. So I'm gonna say select tool right here. I'm gonna select material hardwood. And then I'm gonna say the shape Oko, see what we got here and end mills. There you go. There's a list of end mills. Now, just like last time, we are gonna select that a quarter of an inch end mill. Now there are two here by default in Carbide Create. There is one that is three quarters of an inch long and then there is one that is one inch long. Uh, doesn't really matter too much here in terms of which one you select because the values are essentially the same, but we certainly want one that is longer, that is an inch longer because we are cutting material that is 20 millimeters. So I'm gonna select that one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave the step over the same for our contour path, it doesn't really matter. The depths per path, again, we want 0.15, just like we did for fusion. We wanna change this to 40, change this to 80, and 14,000, not that that matters because we have the Makita router. So I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And then we are gonna change the name. We're gonna say contour 0.25. There you go, click okay. I am going to select this guy and say show simulation. It's going to calculate the simulated toolpath and then show me, uh-oh, what's going on here? It didn't cut the depth that we wanted. Interesting, let's go back. All right, let's double click this guy. Aha, we did not set our max depth. That is my fault. Completely boogered that one up, didn't I? All right, so we wanna set this to the 20 millimeters, and I don't remember off the top of my head what 20 millimeters is, so 20 divided by 25.4 is that a 0.7874. We will copy that. We'll paste that guy in there and we'll select OK. All right, so here is our simulation. It looks good. It is cutting all the way through. It is stepping down at that 0.1 inches. And so looks like we have good G-code. This is going to produce what we want. So now, next, what we need to do is we need to export this G-code. And once again, I would like to reiterate, I have the version, the free version of the software that allows me to export the G-code. If you download this software now, it will not have that capability. It is unfortunate, and I wish they would roll that back, but they didn't. So if you do want to use Carbide Create and you don't have a Shape Oko, you will need the Pro version to do this. So I'm gonna select Pocket. I'm gonna say Save G-Code, something like this, and we're gonna say Dog Paw Pocket 0.75. We're gonna just save it to my downloads folder right there. Then I'm gonna select contour, say save G code, dog paw contour 0.25 and select save. All right, that is it. That is this file. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this file. I'm gonna say dog paw. There you go, and I'm gonna save it to downloads as well so that I have this. All right, so the next steps are to take the G-code that we just saved, put it into the one Infinity, run it, uh, do our bit changes just like we did last time, and then we'll show you the final results. So let's go ahead and cut over to the machine. We'll do a little machining, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap this up.
Here we are in the Onefinity user interface. I have already turned the machine on, and as you just saw, I homed the machine. And then I also zeroed the machine onto where we want this to be for the stock. So the next step is to import that G code into Onefinity user interface. So to do that, I'm going to click this little folder icon again. And then we are going to select here, we are going to start with the pocket because that is the bit that we put into the machine. So we're select OK. OK, well, this is the upside of having the Onefinity and having it render. So it looks like when we exported all of the G code, it exported not only the pockets, but the profile. Interesting. So let's go back to Carbide Create. Let's try again. Let's see what happens. Here we are back in Carbide Create. This is the file that we created. It's a good thing that we saved it. You can see that the tool paths are selected. And when I select pocket, it shows only pocket. Then when I select contour, it shows only the contour. Not entirely sure what's going on. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's right click on it and let's say disable. We will disable that tool path entirely. I'm going to click on just the pocket and I'm going to say show simulation. All right, so this is just the pocket. This is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and save this G code. We're going to call it pocket two, just like that. And then I am going to disable the pocket, re-enable the contour. I'm going to show the simulation. We have just the contour that we're looking for. Okay, so now I'm gonna click say G code. We're gonna say contour two. There you go. We're gonna hit command S to save this guy. We're gonna pivot back over here to the infinity. We're gonna upload pocket two. Okay, so it looks like we got just the pockets. That is good news. So that is an interesting thing from uh, Carbide Create that I wasn't expecting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire up the machine. I'm gonna put my air protection in. We're gonna carve it. Once the pocket operation is complete, we will switch bits. We will put that quarter inch end mill in. We will load up our contour path and we will cut that as well. And then we'll finish it. All right, let's go ahead and cut back to the machine. All right, well, there was something I wasn't expecting. So the LED started coming out of this little light ring. I pushed it back. I can't imagine the force of me pushing it back caused the router to go all bonkers, but it clearly went all bonkers. I have now tripped the fuse that is connected to the router. Uh, that is one advantage of having a fuse on your router uh, that is just slightly over the current. It will stop the router from running. But now I need to figure out what the heck went wrong. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, so our first attempt was a spectacular not success. <laughs> so this is what we got with our very first attempt. So a couple things. This pocket is deeper than this pocket for some unknown reason. And obviously this pocket did not cut very well at all. So as you saw in the video, I did futz around with the router a little bit while it was running, which is never advised, but I can't imagine that caused this problem. Now, when I was putting the tape down, I peeled it up and put it down a couple times, which generally doesn't create a very good connection. And my waste board is not exactly uber duper flat. So 
I think it's a combination of things. Me futzing with the router and taking aggressive cuts in hard maple and the tape issue. So this is a downside of the blue tape method. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to pop back into Carbide Create. I am going to set up some more tool paths or modify the tool paths we have to be a little less aggressive. Probably, I don't know, maybe 0.1 inches per cut, or maybe slow it down to 60 inches per minute, who knows? And then we're gonna go from there, we're gonna re-upload, we're, fortunately I have another piece of maple. <laughs> we're gonna try again and see what happens. And if it fails again, then, well, we'll go from there. All right, let's jump into Carbide Create. Here we are in Carbide Create. It is at the state that we left it when we saved the G-code last time. Uh, and so what I wanna do is go ahead and I want to check our settings first off. So let's double click this guy. It says that we want to start at zero. We want a max depth of 0.95. So let's validate that. 0.95 divided by 25.4. No, 0.95 times 25.4. 15 millimeters, that's how deep we want to cut. So the max depth is good. Let's say depths per pass here was 0.15. That's actually not, that's what we had last time. Now the step over is definitely too small. There's a little ridge here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So let's decrease our step over. Let's see, it is three quarters of an inch. Typically we want a 40% step over times 0.4. So that's 0.3. All right, we'll do a 0.3. Let's change this to 0.125, one eighth of an inch. I'm going to slow the plunge down to 20, but I want to keep cutting at 80. Okay. And I want to click OK. Now I want to check this one. So we want 21 millimeters divided by 25.4. So that's 0 0.826. 0 0.826. Okay, edit this guy, 0.15, again, let's just make this an eighth of an inch. Step over, doesn't matter. We'll decrease the plunge to 20 as well. Click OK, click OK. All right, so now we have three minutes and two minutes instead of two minutes and under two minutes. No big deal. I am going to save the pocket here in the same place. We're going to call it pocket three. <laughs> I want to disable this guy. I want to enable that guy. I want to say save g-code. I want to call it contour three. That looks good. Let's go back over here. We will upload the pocket three. Now the render here in Onefinity should essentially look identical. There's a couple more rings because we're cutting a little bit less deeply, but it looks essentially the same. And we got good feed rates here. Okay, now what we need to do is go back over here, get the another piece of wood, affix it to the machine. We need to re-home and re-zero to make sure our machine is a known good position. And then we'll be off to the races again. Theoretically, I will film this process and we will see what happens. All right. Hopefully we'll be back in just a few minutes.
With our machining complete, just like last time, I did a little cleanup by rounding over the edges with a 1 8 inch round over bit. This time I was a little more successful since we made the bottom just a little bit deeper. A little light sanding, a dunk in some mineral oil, and we have our finished product. All right, so here we are, here it is. This is the product that we just finished on the Onefinity using Carbide Create. And so now, the astute viewer, if you watched my last video, you will notice something just a little bit different between this one and the one I finished last time using Fusion 360. So right off the bat, you can see that the walls on this one are significantly thinner than the walls on this one. So as the machine was cutting, I noticed this. I said, well, that's kind of weird. I uh, went through some uh, pain <laughs> to make sure that everything was set up properly. Not once, not twice, but three times, as you saw. So I went back to Carbide Crate, and indeed, for whatever reason, the contour tool path was set to cut on the inside, not on the outside. So I don't know why it defaulted back to the inside instead of the outside, but it did. So I would just say be a little bit aware and pay close attention to your contours to make sure you are getting the proper cuts. Nevertheless, this bowl turned out really, really well. I do think that the step over can be just a little bit smaller. There's just, just a little ridge here on the dog paws. The big paw did have a little bit of an island, which I sanded smooth, no big deal. But overall, it turned out really well after our first spectacular not success. <laughs> so by slowing down the feed rate a little bit for the plunge and uh, changing the depth of cut, it cut no problem. It only added about a minute to the cut time. So the final cut time for the pocket was three minutes and 35 seconds instead of uh, two minutes and around 40 seconds or so. So also no big deal. But overall, I think they both turned out really, really well. And I think anyone who were to purchase one of these would be just super happy and super excited with them. All right, well, so even though the high level process was essentially the same, we did save a little bit of time because we didn't need to create that 3D tool body. And we also lost a little time because we needed to create that new end mill library and the end mills. The good news is now that we have those custom end mills made, we can reuse them over and over again without the hassle we went through this time. Comparing Carbide Create to Fusion, the total milling time was lower with Carbide Create than Fusion since we could not include the ramping in Carbide Create. In the end, Carbide Create took about five minutes versus the eight minutes with Fusion, even after we changed the depth of cut and the plunge rate. If you're batching out a bunch of these, that extra three minutes could add up quickly However, you can also turn off ramping in Fusion if you want to recoup some of that time. Now, I believe the success or the failure, however you want to look at it, of our very first cut with Carbide Create shows the value in ramping. I believe if ramping were turned on, then absolutely that uh, stock would not have come loose and it would have potentially been a success. But nevertheless, we found the right settings in Carbide Create and we got a successful carve and that's really all that matters. If you want to try your hand at this specific design, I will link to the file below. It will include both the Fusion 360 design file and the Carbide Create file. Just make sure you pay attention to which side the contour is cutting on. In terms of user interface, certainly Carbide Create is much easier to set up and use, offering far fewer options to configure. However, the more beginner-friendly approach to CAM means you do lose some customization capabilities, like ramping, for example, some of which might be necessary for complicated tool paths or complex work holding solutions. Being able to optimize your surface speed, rapids, and chip load might make or break your project, like I demonstrated here. If you want to dive more into how chip load can affect your next project, then check this video out right here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.